Happy Friday, Conway Cougars, and especially my Jedi friends. Today, we are going to be reading Chapter 17 of Small Spaces. Remember, yesterday we left off with Brian, Coco, and Ollie leaving Mrs. Webster's house. And Mrs. Webster's been dead for a really long time. And the jack-o'-lanterns were Jonathan and Caleb. So let's see how they get away and what happens next. Ollie caught one of her duck-printed rain boots under a tree root and went down with a cry, ripping her jeans and smearing herself with mud. Brian stopped when she yelled and Coco tripped over her, knocking the wind out of them both. Come on, cried Brian. While Ollie and Coco lay wheezing on the ground, he was faster than either of them. What with the hockey and everything? But he waited for them panting. We have to go. Ollie got on her hands and knees, still heaving for breath. She looked around. No one's chasing us, she said. We'll only exhaust ourselves. Are you okay, Coco? I think so, she said, rubbing her knees. Brian was scanning the woods, but Ollie had been right. There was no one in the woods but them. Almost no one. Ollie jumped with a cry. Look! Written on the tree trunk a few patches away in sloppy white letters, there were two words, still watching. Below, a new scarecrow wearing an old-fashioned flowery dress leaned against the tree. Both her hands were paintbrushes. Come on, cried Coco, scrambling up. Hang on, said Ollie. If the scarecrows could get us in the daylight, they would have back at Kathy Webster's house. It's like the bus driver said. She walked up to the scarecrow and it didn't move. She poked it. It felt like an ordinary scarecrow cloth over straw. Are you crazy, demanded Coco. They're watching us. They can't grab us during the day. Then, they'll, uh, then all they have to do is watch us until dark. Were those scarecrows really Caleb and Jonathan, asked Brian, or did that crazy ghost just think they were? I don't know, said Ollie. She found herself hoping Kathy was wrong, but she wasn't sure. Jonathan had promised to serve the smiling man, and the bus driver called the scarecrows his servants. Why can't they get us during the day, Brian asked. Something about them being only partway in the sunshine world, said Ollie. They're weaker. The bus driver said, I don't know. Sunshine word, said Brian. So, they're in both worlds, even though we aren't. Wonder if they know a way for us to get home. Also, what was Kathy doing here? Coco piped up. If she's the lady from your book, Ollie. Ollie didn't know that either. She'd hoped neither of the others could see her shiver. To reassure herself, Ollie looked down at her watch. The countdown read, two hours, 50 minutes, and 45 seconds. They still had a while before the sundown, and the old word, river, okay, that was what food crossed out had meant. Don't eat the food, duh. She opened her mouth to tell Brian and Coco about her watch and then closed it again. Did you hear that? Asked Brian suddenly. They all went still listening. Is that running water? Said Coco. Leave Creek, said Brian. Finally, come on. If you've had enough playing chicken with that creepy thing, Ollie, let's go. I'm thirsty. They hurried on, not without several backward glances. Ahead of them came the sound of roaring water. You could just see it shining through the trees. When Brian halted and said, hold up a minute, Ollie, you're bleeding. Ollie hadn't noticed. She looked down and saw a good sized gash on her knee. I've got a band-aid in my bag, Brian said. Let's clean it off first. The last thing we ne you need now is tetanus. Tetanus, said Ollie. We'll just have to get in line behind the dehydration, exposure, starving, and all oh, right, kidnapping by evil scarecrows. But she didn't protest when Brian dug into his bag and got out the teensy first aid kit. They'll definitely make you an Eagle Scout for this, said Coco impressed. Brian looked proud of himself. He dug out an alcohol pad, some Neosporin, and a Snoopy Band-Aid and passed them to Ollie. She wiped her blood away, dabbed on some ointment, stuck the Snoopy on, and it felt strangely better. While they were at it, Coco changed the Band-Aid on her chin, and Ollie dragged the one, changed the one on the back of Brian's head. They all felt better after. Not because they such had such bad cuts or anything, but more because the last 24 hours had been so full of mysteries and impossible problems and being scared. It was a relief to deal with an ordinary problem, like a scraped knee. Thanks, Brian, said Ollie, meaning it. Brian looked a little embarrassed. Don't mention it. Let's go before the scarecrows come, Coco said, or the ghost. 
She was shifting from foot to foot. Ollie had a sudden mental image of a skull-headed woman floating towards them, feet not quite touching the ground and her two scarecrow son lurching along behind. She shivered and got to her feet. They started off downhill towards the roaring water. Brian was looking worried. The gin that gingerbread, he said, I, I, it, well, it was like Ferrisone, wasn't it? Coco looked puzzled, but Ollie got it. Ferrisone ate food in the afterworld after being abducted by Hades, she explained. As a consequence of eating there, she had to spend part of every year in the underworld forever. Now Coco looked scared. I don't think I ate the gingerbread, she said. I think I spat it out. Me too, said Brian. I spat it out. We shouldn't have eaten it in the first place, but I was hungry. It's probably okay, said Ollie. Besides, we have to drink the water, and that comes from here, too. She shook her empty bottle out for emphasis <coughs> and pointed to the foamy creek. Now, Brian and Coco looked very uncertain. There might be weird rules in this place that we don't know about, said Ollie. But dehydration is real. So is d dysentery said Brian. Lead Creek goes past how many farms? In the real world it does, said Ollie. But here, have you seen any animals like any? I thought I saw eyes the first night, said Coco. Green eyes like a raccoon or something, but maybe I was wrong. I thought I heard an animal padding around while we were walking, Brian admitted, but I didn't see anything. We're still going to have to risk the creek, said Ollie. We won't get far without water. While Brian and Coco waited, she went down the slippery bank of Lead Creek. The water looked colder and darker and faster here. It whispered against the rocks like it had a voice. Ollie hurriedly filled her bottle and went back to the others. Here, she said, have a sip, and a snack will make us feel better. Ollie got the chocolate chip muffins from her lunch box. She broke it into three pieces and passed it around. They all munched for a few minutes. Man, said Brian, looking happier, your dad really can bake. Yes, said Ollie, and felt tears pricking in her eyes. He knits too. He knitted my socks. Don't be sad, Ollie, Coco said at once. You'll see him again. We all will. Coco lifted her chin after we beat those scarecrows. You tell him, Tiny, said Brian, and Coco glared. Ollie gr grinned and took out a cautious sip from her bottle. The water was cold and a little metallic, Brian said. I really hope you're right. Drank and passed the bottle to Coco. Is this down under, Coco whispered a small voice after she drank. Nope, said Ollie, it definitely isn't. Down under wouldn't be so wet. Besides, we didn't do anything bad. Also, we're not dead. She wasn't really religious herself, said Brian, and looked doubtful, but he said, Don't worry, Tiny. Don't call me Tiny, said Coco. I'm normal. You're just big. Ollie barely heard their snipping. She'd remembered something. When I'd met her by the creek, Linda Webster's was talking about making a bargain. With the smiley man, maybe, Brian asked. Just like Jonathan, her soul for Ollie's lips pressed together. Not her own soul, ours. That's why we ended up here. One busload of kids, signed, sealed, delivered for whatever he gave her. That doesn't seem fair, said Brian. No one asked us. Ollie thought for a torn up field in the rain. A lot of things aren't fair, she said. What now, she glanced down her watch. House, it said. To the right, a narrow covered footbridge crossed the creek high above the racing water. On the other side of the creek lay cornfields, a vegetable garden, berry patches, hog pens, a cattle shed. Only it wasn't a tidy collection of buildings like yesterday. This farm was old and worn. They couldn't see any signs of life, but that didn't mean there weren't any. There were a lot of scarecrows. They jutted out of the field. They clustered around the house. Are you sure they aren't dangerous before dark? Brian muttered. Mostly sure, said Ollie. Do you think there's any answers over there? Brian asked. Because honestly, that's a lot of scarecrows and there's not much daylight left. Maybe we should stay on this side of the creek. Mama. Yes, said Ollie. I think there's answers over there. She took a deep breath. Okay, guys, there's something I haven't told you. And it might just be my imagination, but 
Ollie explained about her watch. Neither Brian nor Coco said anything for a moment. Then Coco said logically, well, if Kathy Webster's here, then I'll bet anything your mom is here too, helping us, she smiled. That makes me feel better. Me too, said Brian. Really, said Ollie, enormously relieved. Yep, said Brian. I guess we're going to the house, Coco. Let's go look, said Coco nervously, but we have to find somewhere to hide before dark. They headed to the footbridge, and as they walked, Ollie saw that Coco's stupid heart printed sneakers were soaked. She probably had cold feet for the whole day, but hadn't complained, not once. Coco's all right, Ollie thought, aloud. Aloud, she said, come on, an hour until sunset. It seems like the day should have been longer, said Brian. Yesterday, too, it got dark really soon after we left the bus. Bad Narnia, said Ollie. I guess it's darker here. Below them, Leith Creek ran fast and cold in the evening light. The mist was just gathering in the cornfield. Oh, no. Dun, 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 dun. All right, Conway Cougars and my Jedis. That is the end of chapter 17. It sure is. Tune in Monday for chapter 18, and we will find Tune out what happens to the game. Have a good day, everybody. Enjoy bye your bye. weekend. Bye.